introduction. So my name is Olenka, and I started my company three years ago when I was a sophomore at Harvard. And I subsequently dropped out my second semester of junior year to pursue my startup full time. My co-founder is my brother. Neither of us are programmers. We don't code. A matter of fact, when we first got started, I had to Google what entrepreneurship and what a startup was. I still to this day struggle with spelling entrepreneurship. The R, the E, the U, it's just a lot. So um, believe me, anything could happen. <laughs> Um, so my lingo is an app that allows for someone to go to the movie theater with their earphones and listen to their preferred language. We don't auto translate. It's not a computer translating word by word. Actually, movies are released internationally with dubbed soundtracks. There's voice actors that dub over Tom Cruise's voice in various languages and all of that. So what our app does is it uses a microphone on the phone to listen to the noise in the room and then play back that corresponding dubbed audio track through the earphones. Everyone's watching the same picture on the screen. Uh, the inspiration for my lingo came about because my parents are immigrants from Poland. They moved to this country and because of language barriers, we couldn't do normal family things sometimes, one of which was going to the movies together. If they did come with us, we were translating in their ear the whole time, which just made for a poor experience for ourselves and for other audience members. The moment that we came up the, with the idea, my brother and I, was when a cousin was visiting from Poland. And in Connecticut, there's not much to do. So you kind of just force guests to go to the movies all the time. Uh, so we went to a movie, and we loved it. We loved the movie. We're we coming out of the theater, and we're chatting about it. And our cousin didn't like the movie. So we diagnosed his distaste for the movie due to the fact that he didn't really understand what was going on. I said, wouldn't it be cool if he could just sit there in the theater with us, bring his smartphone, and, and he'd be laughing at the same jokes and all that. So really, my lingo is for anybody who is language displaced, as we call it. Somebody who's either temporarily or permanently in a country where the native language spoken is not their own. Or, for all of us here today, if we were to take a group trip to France and we wanted to dub the French movie back into its original English language, we'd be able to do that. So I want to talk to you guys today about a very special moment that I didn't really know how special it was until reflecting back a few years later. So this was not the aha moment. This is actually something that happened two weeks after that. It was a phone call that took place between my brother and I, my future co-founder. This phone call took place two weeks after we did some extensive research into finding out whether this is something we should pursue or not. So we wanted to know, were there any obstacles, any non-starters? Did this product already exist? If so, is it around or did it fail? If it failed, how come? All of those questions you have to really know about before you get started and dive right into something. First, I started by doing my research in Hollywood understanding what, what goes on. Can, can you distribute the audio of a movie onto a smartphone platform? Would that sort of thing make sense? So using my alumni network at school, I got in touch with top tier executives at Hollywood Studios and talked to them on the phone and sort of picked their brain from the student's point of view. Would this be something we'd be able to pursue? License an audio track from a movie theater, put it on an app platform, and figure out some sort of revenue split. Yes, it is possible. Of course, nothing like that has it ever been done before, but the executive at the studio at the time said, this, this would make sense. Uh, it, you know, Hollywood, does, there's some things that take some time, but I'm confident that you could get it done. OK, great. Next was doing research into dubbed audio tracks. Who owns the rights to them? How are they made? Uh, is the Spanish version of the movie a shorter length of movie than the English version? Well, thankfully, I found out that actually the music and effects of both movie, various languages are exactly the same, and they'd be able to correctly on top of each other for, a, for, for the phone to synchronize the two audio tracks. So then I used the professor network at school to find out everything there is to know about audio, digital audio, acoustic fingerprinting, all of these words that I've never really heard before. Um, and wanted to ask a professor whether 
something like this is possible? Could theater audio be inputted into a device's microphone? Could the processing take place? And could it output audio through earphones? The professor said, you know what, conceptually this does make sense. There's some little things here and there, some nuances that are going to be difficult to work through. But conceptually, yes. I didn't know anything about coding, so I asked him, hey, can you build it? And he's like, I'm a professor. Um, I'm not going to do that. But I have some graduate students who I can introduce you to. Great. So our, the professor who I got into contact with at Harvard, his graduate student was our very first app developer who worked with us for about 18 months. Yes. OK, so to recap. My cousin comes to the theater with us, and he has a problem. We think of this idea. We do some research to find out whether there's any huge non-starters for us to get started. OK, then there's a phone call. This phone call, uh, my brother was in Louisiana at the time. I was in New York. And this phone call was about whether we're going to jump right in and do this. I remember the question, so are you ready to do this? And we both said, hell yeah, we're ready to do this. We're going we're gonna to start this company. and hey, we looked up release schedules. Dark Knight, the Batman movie, was coming out in six weeks. So we said, let's launch for Dark Knight. Six weeks. OK. So that means translation, two weeks. We gave ourselves two weeks' time to build a homegrown proprietary technology that synchronized audio tracks and reference playback speed. I, I could go off forever. OK, sure, sure. Oh, and uh, get it approved by the App Store, which, of course, I don't know if some of you know, is so easy. OK, then <laughs> the next two weeks, we had to find the right people at each of the studios. There's seven of them. You know, go meet these people, get a meeting, get a lawyer. I don't know, find a lawyer, get a term sheet written up, and just they'll sign it. We'll figure out what the revenue splits are. It's great. OK, perfect, two weeks. OK, the next two weeks, market the app. Uh, where, is my lingo app, domain name? OK, pop it on. We'll get some. My friend, he does graphics. We'll do the branding, how hard. Brand image, sure. Uh, and and I, I'll take out Facebook ads. I have $50 in my bank account. And we'll just we'll target the right people, right? OK. So uh, here we are today. And this hasn't really, <laughs> haven't really gone to that epic commercial launch yet. Turns out the technology was a bit harder than we thought. <laughs> uh, you don't just go show up and get a meeting with a top level COO executive and just you know, write down and uh, spit in your hands and handshake and, you know, the deal is done. Nope. Oh, and finding out who your target audience is and coming up with your messaging and your copy, that takes a little bit longer too. Oh, and to do all of this, you need money, right? So <laughs> raising money is not an overnight process either. Okay. So, yeah, this question was a little, it carried a little bit more weight than we thought. What this question really meant was, are you ready to be told no a million times? Are you ready to have deadlines pushed and not accomplished? Are you ready to take on the responsibility of raising $750,000, then $2 million, then $4 million? Are you ready to lose control of your board? Are you ready to have a board or have board meetings? What, what are those? Are you ready to hire people, or people fire people? Are you ready to read through legal documents, 95% of which you don't understand, and you have to look up every single word and phrase? It's, yeah, so maybe the exchange of hell yeahs in six weeks wasn't, we weren't thinking about what it really meant. Uh, but sometimes I believe that this inexperience or our inexperience getting started was actually the cause of how far we pushed ourselves. Yes, we missed the six-week deadline, but we thought, OK, maybe we'll catch the Christmas release. And we just kept on pushing ourselves and working harder and harder. Perhaps if we knew how hard it was, we wouldn't have even gotten started. Really, it flipped our world upside down. So when I was Googling what startups were back in 2012, I signed up for pretty much every startup event within a 20-mile radius of Boston when I was going to school there at the time. And I was sitting there and taking notes and just trying to soak it all in. There was one event that was about serial entrepreneurship. People who've done, sold companies, failed at companies, and just done the thing five, tens, twenty times. There was one serial entrepreneur who said something that really stuck with me. And he said that when you build your company, there's going to be a lot of dark moments, dark moments, where you really, really feel alone and feel like everything's wrong and it's all over. 
And that stuck with me because I experienced several dark moments in the company. And there are times where they didn't feel like moments. They felt like utter failures. Like, it is over. I'm talking patent trolls sending you demand letters from Europe saying that you're infringing on their intellectual property and you're owed. OK, so, uh, so so there, there are some really dark, dark moments that I wish I could share with you, but it'd be completely inappropriate for my company to share in a public situation. So I do have an anecdote, though, that I think you may enjoy about a dark-ish moment. So it's, it's, I'm a sophomore at school. We've been at it for six months. We did miss the dark night, but we were dead set on getting the next film. And I was talking to one of the studios and keeping the conversation warm, trying to keep them interested. They kept on asking, we want to see a prototype. We want to see the technology work, because what are we really talking about here? I said, yeah, 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 it's, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But again, it's, it's harder to build than you think. So I rushed out from my engineering and development team. I said, please, just please, just give me something, some basic prototype that I could go to LA with and just show them something. So we had a janky app built with just a button it worked 50% of the time. It took forever to sync. You pretty much missed a scene of the movie for it to sync. And then you had to sit in the right place in the auditorium and capture the audio in like the right way. Um, I said, I'll take it. You know, let's go. So now, due to copyright issues, whatever, we couldn't upload that app onto the App Store. So the way to get it onto people's phones was for me to actually, it's called ad hoc distribute, plug that plug the phone, the iPhone, into your MacBook and download provisioning profiles, all this stuff that was very difficult for me to do. Uh, so I saw, I saw the list, the roster of people attending the demo at this studio, unnamed studio, and there are about 15 to 20 top level executives. I'm talking C-level people coming to this demo. I don't know how, they, how I got them to do that, but anyway. So, I had to put the app on each of their phones so that everyone could have their own demo. I asked them to bring their own headphones. OK. I fly out from Boston. I take a red eye with two layovers, because that's all I could afford. I wake up really tired. And I show up to the studio's office. And I knock on every, each one of their doors, each person who's coming to the demo. And I ask to borrow their phone so I could upload the janky MyLingo app onto their phone. So I take the, their phone. I plug it in. I'm spending 10 minutes feeling really techy, like, yeah. I, I bring back their phone. I'm on phone number 10. And I take the phone, I plug it in, and I see, and I, I see something like my iTunes pops up, and then I look, I'm like, wait, yeah, I've been noticing this. All these apps start disappearing after I do this whole process, and I'm like, why is my why is my Dropbox constantly working? What are all these photos that are coming? I don't have these many photos. Oh, oh, I'm deleting everyone's data and everything they have on their phones, and I'm replacing it with our janky. My lingo app. <laughs> that's what's happening. That's what that's that's what just happened. I happened to be on the CMO's, the chief marketing officer's phone at the time. So I go to her beautiful, beautiful, beautiful office, <laughs> and I go, Mrs. So and So, who shall remain nameless. Um, so good news, you have the My Lingo app on your phone. You're all set for the demo tomorrow. Bad news, <laughs> your kids' photos, your apps, your data. They've disappeared. <laughs> so yeah, so that, okay, so talk about a dark moment, right? Okay, so then the next day, next day, my apologies, I sent my apologies. They come to the demo, and they have their phones wiped, and so that's strike one. Strike two is that they're showing up to this thing. They're super busy, and they, they just, you know, their jaws drop to the floor, because they're like, you've been a voice over the phone to me, and you're clearly 18 years old. Like this. Is, What's going on here? There's a child presenting to me. OK, so then, then, so then three, OK, great. So I do my whole spiel at the front. I'm like, OK, when the audio plays, everybody press that go button. OK, so everyone's pressing the go button. That, it's like, it's a disaster. 50% of them are waving. It's not syncing. It's not syncing. Them talking is causing the rest of the other audios to trip up because they're taking that audio. And so I'm just like, oh, God. So then. then so there's one phone that's working, so I'm just telling everybody to just, just put their phones down. We're going to pass around that one phone and share earbuds down the row for 20 times. So, okay. 
Fast forward two and a half years later, this studio is one of our founding studios. Uh, we've reached agreements with them. They've given us content. They've partnered us in, in terms of marketing. It's, they've been awesome. And the reason why we got to that point is because I didn't, after that very dark moment, just go to Boston, pretend that never happened, and just go carry on my student life. Uh, I recognized that this is not going to be some little cute thing that I did one time and I gave up on. I really wanted this to work. And the best thing to do is just remember, I do TGDG, tenacity, grit, and deferred gratitude. Just keep grinding and admit fault when necessary. Correct what you've done and show a better data point. At that time, that was a pretty brutal data point. But the more that I came back to that studio, show them that our technology improved, show them that we were a more experienced team and that we were going to do something great, that line shot upwards and we were able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Also, I'd like for you guys to come away today knowing that inexperience doesn't necessarily mean, or it does not, ne is not necessarily adverse to the success of a startup. If, if it, I believe that if it wasn't for my inexperience, uh, I would have shied away from this big feat that uh, we've gone through the past three years, and I would have never even stepped foot. And I'm very glad I have, because to date, uh, it's great. We've just closed around from a strategic investor that I'm very happy about. Uh, we have a planned launch, this time for real. <laughs> Next season, we've had three founding studios, 11 founding exhibitor chains, and um, we're planning for an international launch in 2016. So thank you very much for listening to me today.